Uh, if there's one, maybe not criticism, but something a lot of people say is missing from stoicism, it's that it's too serious, it's too internally focused, and that it doesn't emphasize positive emotions like empathy, love, joy, or positive relationships enough, at least not, not as much as other philosophies do. Uh, even in ancient Greece, people used to call the, the Stoics the men of stone. Um, I, I know your book on courage is the first of four that you're writing on the four great Stoic virtues, uh, courage, temperance, justice, and wisdom. What I found really interesting is that these virtues intersect perfectly with uh, the six great virtues that Marty Seligman, the father of positive psychology, talks about. So there's the four virtues are the same, but then he adds two more. He adds empathy or love, and then beauty or transcendence. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of similar to the thought that I read recently that Jonathan Haidt had when he wrote The Happiness Hypothesis. He says that when he started writing the book, he believed like the Stoics that happiness comes from within. But by the time he'd finished writing the book, he changed his mind to happiness comes from between, from getting mm -hmm. the right relationships and living for something uh, greater than yourself. I know you're a family man. I know that you give advice that helps millions of people. What's your view on the importance of empathy, love, positive relationships, and their role in living the good life? So I would say that those two things you said about sort of uh, beauty and transcendence and then about uh, relationships and empathy and, and, and love, I would just, I would say they're very important. I would agree they're not talked about enough in Stoicism, but I would say that they clearly fall under the buckets of justice and wisdom. Uh, wisdom is not simply the... Right study of books, but also the study of nature, the understanding of nature, the understanding that some things are ineffable and cannot be articulated, but can only be experienced, right? So to me, that all falls under the bucket of, of wisdom. And I think the Stoics actually talk about beauty quite a, a great deal, not sort of superficial beauty of like a woman's face, but the beauty of you know, a, a sunset or the way a doves fly together or whatever. Um, as far as love and empathy, to me, this this fits very clearly under justice, not justice in the, the legal sense, but justice in the sense of like, what are our obligations? What are our what produces meaning? Um, you know, what is our true purpose on this planet? It's it's other people. Right. It's the it's the good we're able to do mm. for and through other people. So um, I agree they're very important and they're, they're certainly major priorities in my life. You know, as I first started writing about stoicism, I was more interested in courage and self-discipline, the sort of independent, uh, like sort of of the world virtues. But I think as you study it and you learn more about it, um, you eventually these other doors open and you come to understand them as being equally important and fulfilling. Hmm, amazing. Yeah, it, it, that's often the case, right? You've got the sort of the, the general understanding of a certain school of thought. And then when you get deeper into the ideas, you find that those thinkers have actually um, talked about, you know, a lot of the things that, that you know, might not seem obvious. When you think of stoicism, you think of this really like stern self-control, self-discipline. But then you get a little bit deeper into the in, in, into the writings and you realize that they, they do talk about, about a lot of these other themes. Um, and when you really look I, I at that, who the Stoics were as people, they were husbands mm. and fathers and sons and daughters. Mm. They held public office. They fought mm. for causes. They wrote poetry. You know, they, 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 they mm. tended gardens. So the idea that these were these like unfeeling beasts disconnected from the world, I mean, it's just not borne out by the facts. And, you know, they mm. weren't monks, right? They mm. didn't live in monasteries. They were, of all the philosophical schools, the most like of this earth, like the most connected and involved and participatory of all of the, all of the philosophical schools. Um, and actually this is the fundamental contrast between Stoicism and Epicureanism. It's not that the Stoics didn't like pleasure and the Epicureans did, it's that the Epicureans pursued those interests at the expense of participation in public life. And the Stoics said, no, we are obligated to each other and that relationships are important and that you can't run away to your little garden and live in a fantasy world. And so I, I, I see Stoicism as a philosophy that's engaged with other people and, and they're primarily for other people. Interesting. So also looking at the way these philosophers lived their lives, not just like the first reading that you might you might get. 
off of their readings. That, that's a great distinction as well. I know that you've re you recently just opened up an independent bookstore in Bastrop, yeah. Texas. I'm curious to know, what do you feel the future of the bookstore is in an age of Amazon? So it's it's been interesting. Uh, first off, uh, probably the worst possible business that you could try to open during a pandemic. Probably the worst possible business you could open, period, uh, in a world where most people don't read and most people that do read buy online or read audiobooks or whatever. Um, but it was just it was just something important to me. It was something I felt like would would do some good in this little community that I'm in. And then, um, you know, something I felt like could be additive to what I was already doing without much additional work. Like I needed office space and then I had this sort of storefront beneath the office and I was sort of what would I do with it? Um, and it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's actually integrated in nicely with, with the stuff uh, that I was already doing. The only, the only part that makes me sad about it is that, you know, I, part of it was I wanted to really interact with people. I wanted to do events. I wanted to meet fans. I wanted to have, I wanted to interact with human beings and, and the pandemic still makes that a, a little bit difficult. So, so is, is what I hear is it was, it was a labor of love and, and yes. what you're trying to create, bless you, is those experiences where humans connect to humans, which is not something you get when you order something on Prime or Amazon. Yeah, it's certainly right? not a get rich quick scheme opening a, an independent bookstore <laughs> right. in 2021. Um, I think, you know, I think there's something special about bookstores. Stoicism is actually founded in a bookstore. Um, so I, I, I sort of mm -hmm. loved the continuity of that. Um, and then that's where the name comes from. It's called the Painted Porch, which is the name of what the, the ancient Stoa translates from uh, in, 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 into English from Greek. Um, but but I, I felt like like I have a podcast that reaches millions of people. I have a, you know social media that reaches millions of people. My books have sold all over the world, but all of that is digital. I think at this point, something like 60% of my sales are in ebook e or audio form. So, but we exist in a physical world. Right, the digital world is wonderful, but we exist in a physical world, and so it just felt sort of special and important to do something like real, and that's what I was excited to do.